Hello heathens and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about Drom Kavedet, the dream poem. If you haven't heard of this, it's astoundingly heathen, so it's one of my new favorite poems. Can't wait to share it with you guys. Drom Kavedet is one of the most popular ballads of Norway, and I think this is a poem that heathens should be talking about. One of the most amazing things I found about this poem is that it mentions the Gjallarbru, the bridge of Helheim, the realm of Loki's daughter Hel. It's a noisy bridge. Gjallar bru means the bridge of Gjol. Gjol is noisy. The amazing thing of why historians think Dramkavedit dates back a long time ago to perhaps the late medieval age around the 13 to 1500s or earlier is solely due to these heathen references. The audience of this ballad would have been people that knew of the Gjallarbru, people that knew of the lore. This might be from the time of Snorri. And I'm going to break down some of these heathen references within the poem as I read it to you. So this is Drom Kavedit, or the dream poem. Will you hearken to me, I can sing, of a good young man, about Olaf Astesen, who had been asleep for so long. And it was Olaf Astesen who had been asleep for so long. He lay himself down on Christmas Eve, taken by a strong sleep, did not wake until Epiphany, when people were going to church. He lay himself down on Christmas Eve, now he had slept for so long, did not wake until Epiphany, when the birds shook their wings. He did not wake until Epiphany, when the sun dawned on the hillside, when he saddled his swift mount, intending to ride to church. The priest stands by the altar, reading out long passages, Olaf seats himself by the church door and tells of his many dreams. Old men and young gave their attention, while Olaf Astesen told of his dreams. I lay me down on Christmas Eve, taken by a strong sleep, did not wake until Epiphany, when people were going to church. For the moon shines, and the paths disperse so wide. I have been up with the clouds, and down to the ocean dark. Those who wish to follow my footsteps will not laugh lightheartedly. I have been up with the clouds and down at the ocean floor. Those who wish to follow my footsteps will not laugh from merry mouth. I have been up with the clouds and down on the dark moors. I have seen the heat of hell as a part of the heavenly kingdom. I have traveled over hallowed water and over deep dales. I hear water but see it not. It seems to run under the earth. I am so tired and travel weary, and inside me I seem to burn. I hear water, but reach it not. It seems to flow under the earth. My horse did not neigh. My hound did not bark. The morning birds did not chirp. It seemed strange to me. I was in the other world for many long nights. God in heaven knows how much misery I saw. I know something about many a thing. Therefore, I am thought to be wise. A long time I was in hell. I've come to know death well. The first time I traveled hence, I traveled over a bed of thorns. Torn was my scarlet cloak, and likewise the nails on my feet. For the moon shines, and the paths disperse so wide. When I went hence, I traveled through a ring of thorns. Torn was my scarlet cloak, and likewise the nails on my fingers. I came to the Gjallar Bridge. She hangs so high in the air. All of the bridge is with gold covered, and there are spikes in each end. The serpent stings and the hound bites. The ox stands in the middle. Three are the creatures on the Galler Bridge. All are grim and wrathful. The hound bites, the serpent stings, and the ox stands goring. They let none over the Galler Bridge, who has judged wrongly. I have walked the Galler Bridge. It is both steep and hard. I have waded through the Voss Moors. Now I am past them. I have waded through the moors. No foothold found I there. Now I have walked the Gjallar Bridge, with mire soil in my mouth. I have walked the Gjallar Bridge, fastened with hooks, but the moors were harder. God help those who go there. Then I came to those waters, where the ice turned black. God directed my mind. I went away from there. For the moon shines, and the paths disperse so wide. I was in the other world. I knew no one there. Only my blessed Godmother with bright gold on her hands. Some went over the grimmer mound, and others over the skull sands. But those who crossed the Gjallar stream came out wet on the other shore. 
I turned onto a winter path on my right hand side. There I saw paradise, such glimmering fair lands. There again I saw my godmother. I did not know where to go. Get thyself to Broxvallen, where judgment shall be pronounced. When I came to the pilgrim's church, I knew no man there, only my good godmother with bright gold on her hands. In Broxvallen, where judgment shall be pronounced. From the north, a host came. They rode so hard. In front rode the devil, behind him his great host. From the north, a host came. I thought it to be terrible. In front rode the devil. He rode upon a black horse. In the translation for the devil, the words they actually use are like Groot Grasgag or Groot Greybeard, which is another name of Odin, meaning Great Greybeard. From the south a host came. I thought it to be good. In front rode the Lord of Souls, St. Michael. He rode upon a white horse. From the south a host came, riding so silently. In the front rode Lord of Souls, St. Michael, next to Jesus Christ. From the south a host came. They seemed slow to me. In the front rode Lord of Souls, St. Michael, and a horn lay under his arm. It was St. Michael. He sounded the long horn, and now all souls will would receive judgment. The souls began to tremble like aspen leaves in the wind, and each and every soul there wept over its sins. It was the Lord of Souls, St. Michael, weighing in his scales. Then he weighed all sinning souls towards Jesus Christ. I saw a young man, the first I came by, a little boy he bore in his arms. He was in earth to his knees, in Broxvallen, where judgment shall be pronounced. I came by a man. His cloak was lead. This poor soul in our world was greedy in hard times. I came to several men. They carried glowing soil. God have mercy on the poor souls who move border stones in the woods. They're talking about the Dildegast that I mentioned in my owl video because it's the first ever mention of the Dildegast or the border stone ghost. And it can sometimes take the form of an owl. So it's kind of weird how this poem just fell on my lap after I started seeing owls everywhere. And I'm very excited to share it with you guys. Where do we leave off? I came to several children. They stood there aflame. God have mercy on the sinning souls who cursed their father and mother. I came to the toad and the serpent. They stung each other with their teeth. They were sinning siblings who had cursed each other. There I met two serpents. They bite each other in the tails. They were sinful cousins who married each other on earth. I came to the witch's house. There were witches inside. They stood in a pool of blood, so heavy was their work. It is hot in hell, hotter than anyone thinks. There they hanged over a cauldron with tar and chopped a priest down. So forgive me if it's too blasphemous to say, but it seems like there's a special place in hell for priests that commit crimes against humanity. And that kind of makes me happy. He is blessed on earth who gives shoes to the poor. He need not walk barefooted on the bed of thorns. Feet and shoes are mentioned on this trek to hell. And I found that interesting because we have references of hell shoes, that it is a good thing to leave shoes for the dead for their trek to Helheim, Valhalla, wherever they may go in the afterworld. This is mentioned in a few sagas such as Gizli Saga. Okay, I'm trying not to interrupt so much, but I'm super excited about this poem, so I'm gonna continue. The tongue speaks and truth is told on judgment day. He is blessed on earth who gives a cow to the poor. He need not walk dizzily on the high Geller bridge. He is blessed on earth who gives bread to the poor. He need not fear in the other world, the harsh bang of hounds. He is blessed on earth who gives grains to the poor. He need not fear upon the Gyalar bridge, the sharp horns of the ox. He is blessed on earth who gives food to the poor. He need not fear in the other world, neither mockery nor hatred. He is blessed on earth who gives clothes to the poor. He need not fear in the other world, high mountains of ice. Old men and young gave their attention. That was Olaf Astason, now he has told his dreams. Stand up, Olaf Astason, who has been asleep for so long. And that is the conclusion of this ballad, Drom Kvetit, the dream poem. He falls asleep for the 12 days of Christmas tide, but ends up going to a heathenish realm of Helheim. The moral of the story is to be generous and kind while you're alive, so you don't have to suffer on the trek to the Gjallabru. There's definitely a blending of heathen lore in here, 
and with such vivid imagery, like my favorite of the spikes in the bridge at the end or how steep it is. I always pictured the bridge as like a normal, just golden bridge, but now I picture it with spikes and very steep, a horrible journey to get one side to the other. In another tale, it's the bridge where Hermod had been asked what his business was there by Madguth, the fierce battler or battle ready, who guards the bridge. And Madguth is one of my favorite figures in Norse lore, but she's not mentioned here as guarding the bridge. We do have other details though that Snorri didn't mention. Like, I think Snorri says that it, the bridge is covered with gold or the roof is thatched in gold, but here the depiction says all of the bridge is covered with gold and there are spikes in each end, which is pretty brutal. I always pictured it much differently before reading this poem than after. Probably the most amazing thing about this is that refrain or where it keeps repeating in Brock's Valen, where judgment shall be pronounced. Well, what is Brock's Valen? We know from Voluspa, there's a hall of the kin of Sindri. So who is Brock and Sindri? Eitri or Sindri, possibly meaning to spark or to create sparks from. They were blacksmith dwarves. Brock is the one who created Mjolnir, Thor's hammer. So this whole poem, when they say go to Brock's Valen, it's some sort of hall that we have no other reference to of Brock. We do have reference though from Snorri of his brother's hall, which is a place that souls will go after Ragnarok that have been virtuous and will be saved. There's actually a few halls like this that will re-emerge after Ragnarok, right? But we have no other reference, as I said, to Brock's Valen. It's just kind of fascinating to think about that this may be a piece of the puzzle, a different realm that we never heard of, but definitely was known to the audience of Dramkavedit. And doesn't it kind of make sense in a way if Sindri, the brother of Brock, has a hall? Brock has one too. I just think it's amazing and there's something to this poem. It could have several meanings. And this is because the Norse were very poetic people. There's kennings for all sorts of stuff. The hall of Brock's Valen, the Valen part, could have the same root as Voluspa, which would make it the Cirrus of Brock, or having something to do with the Cirrus, like a, the seat of Brock, the mound of Brock, the veil of Brock, the seat of the Cirrus of Brock, any number of things. Brock would be a dwarf of high status to create such an invaluable item as Thor's hammer, which won the bet. He bet his head that he could create something better than the Sons of Ivaldi. Mjolnir was considered the best of all the mystical creations of the dwarves. I really hope you guys enjoyed this poem as much as me and can't wait to hear your thoughts about it. Stay safe this Yule and hopefully we don't get too far in our horns or cups that we end up in hell sleeping for 12 days. 